All right, hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Enthusiast Experiment. I am your host, Mike, and this is a video I've been wanting to bring to you guys for a long time. It is my, I got more of an in-depth look at the Peak Design bag now that I've had some hands-on time with it. It's a little bit darker, as you can see right now, because it is raining outside, and I just got, uh, got home. You can see the contrast difference there, but this is what it would normally look like, and then it's a little wet, which we'll get into that in a second. Um, just wanted to start off in case you're wondering why it's so dark. Um, so quick background history, you guys, if you're not familiar, you can watch on my channel. There's the other video where I first got this unboxed. It gave me my initial thoughts and a quick rundown of the overall features of the bag. Um, I was going to do a, a follow-up after I've had some hands-on time with the bag, like I tend to do on this channel. Uh, but sad sob story, my first bag actually got stolen uh, out of the trunk of the car with a whole bunch of stuff in it. So I had to get a second bag. So it's the bag that's so nice, I bought it twice. I uh, had to get a second bag and also replace one of my cameras that was stolen, so uh, enough of that. Now that I've had some hands-on time with my second bag, I uh, wanted to get back in front of you guys and let you know what I think. So I got my notes here. This would normally be in the bag, which I'll get to that in a moment. Um, but yeah, uh, overall it's two thumbs up if you don't want to watch the end of the video. There you go. But I freaking love this thing. I've been carrying it with me every day for probably three or four months now. I'm taking it on a couple of trips on planes and stuff, so I've done a little bit of traveling with it. Nothing too extensive or um, too crazy, but wanted to see what it was like shoving it under the, uh, the seat in front of me. So we'll start off with some of the, I'll start with the cons actually, and then I'll go into the pros, because I feel like there's a lot more pros than cons to this bag. But, you know, Peak Design, if you're listening, um, just some of the stuff that I've run across myself. And then uh, if you guys ever decide to make a backpack, call me. I would love to beta test that for you. Uh, and I'm not too far from you guys. I work in Fida. I know you're in Soma, so. Um, anyways, so, all right, so on to the bad things. The very first thing uh, that I like to point out is, as you can see on my bag here, I have some paracord that does not belong there. So why is that there? It's because I came up with this eloquent uh, solution to keeping this from sliding. So uh, the slide mechanism is from their slide camera strap. Uh, and they adopted it into the bag, which I think is a really great idea. The one problem is this doesn't really lock. It's just kind of like, it just kind of puts a little tension on it. And what happens is you're picking up and putting the bag down throughout the day. Uh, it starts to slide down. I can't demonstrate that for you because I do have it locked in place. Um, but it starts to slide down and over time, all of a sudden, where you adjusted your bag strap is now twice as long, if not longer. Um, and what happened with me is because uh, I live in the Bay Area, San Francisco is where I work and do a lot of walking around downtown area, a couple of miles a day maybe, and over the course of the day, this just starts to slide down, maybe because I'm a fast walker or something, I'm not exactly sure if it's my walking style or if it's um, a design, the way the bag is designed or design flaw of the actual slide lock. Um, but I found a simple solution. I just grabbed some paracord. I had this on my old bag too, so if you see one of these floating around with bright orange paracord, that's my bag, stop them. Um, but got some blue paracord this time because that's what we had laying around the office and just looped it through, looped it through one of the attachments here and here and haven't had any problems with it. Every now and then I'll, I'll cinch it up a little bit just because I don't want it to wear through this, but everything seems super, super uh, strong. So I don't imagine that happening at all, let alone anytime soon. Uh, and then just tucked the knot underneath here. So then you can't see it, doesn't get caught on anything. I'm good to go. Um, and I actually prefer this tile of adjustment way more. So what I would, feedback I guess I would give is if we did this on both sides instead of the slide mechanism. Because I'm once I have my strap length set, I don't adjust it. Uh, I like this idea for taking the bag on and off easily, I guess. But for me, this is more of a hindrance. Uh, and this would be more of a solution, for lack of a better term. Um, so first things out of the way, that guy. Um, the top of the bag deforms. You might not be able to see it that well here. I'll see if I can throw up in a picture, but you can see, all right, so as I'm doing this, um, it does sometimes come back, but now that I've had this bag for a couple of months, this stays pretty dented. Uh, and seeing as how it's only a couple of months old, let's say three, we'll just use that number, three months old, and it's already kind of holding this shape, you know, uh, as that foam starts to kind of get those creases embedded, as time goes on, it's just gonna sit more and more like this, which is kind of, a bummer. This side stays pretty clean actually for me, the way I carry it. I guess I carry it over my right shoulder. Um, so maybe that's part of the reason is a lot of the weight's distributed there. I'm not exactly sure. What I would, 
envision fixing this. I don't know, I'm not an engineer. I don't claim to be one. I'm not a designer. I don't claim to be one. It's just a, a layman's feedback. Is if there's some type of sturdy plastic or metal rod in between these rivets and the end of the bag, just to keep this section right here nice and stiff. Um, and that shouldn't interfere with the way the bag moves, but again, I have no idea. I could be completely wrong. Um, but it would just keep it aesthetically pleasing for a little bit longer, because none of the other foam on my bag itself has really deformed or misshapen. It's only these two weak points right here, and primarily, it's like 95% this side. This side, for now, is pretty clean. Um, next. Front mesh pockets, not good for pins, and no place for pins, really, and in the back, part, uh, the pin section gets caught. So let me show you what I'm talking about there. On the inside, there's no real spots for pens. You can see I got a couple just laying around here. And normally I'd have like a notebook or something in here as well as my keys, um, but that they're over there. Um, but I throw my pens in here. And what I mean by that's not a really good spot for pens is as you're putting them in and taking them out, since it's not like a rigid pocket uh, like this, where you could just slide a pen and it would stick or stay and not deform. Since this is the elastic material, it's really hard to catch a pin's um, clip on there and slide it in and pull it out and slide it in. Again, it's a little feedback thing, but it would have been really nice if one or two of these like back pockets were not mesh and that they were more sturdy, even if it was just one side so you could slide some pins in and out. Because I really appreciate that all of these are and they're great for you know all the memory cards and stuff. And again, it all depends on the use case for your bag. You may not store pins here. Uh, I carry a few different pins just because I that's what I like to do. Um, but that would just be one man's feedback again. And what I meant by the inside pen pocket, so they do have an actual portion for pins. And I guess they could throw them in here, but I'm not about that either, because if it leaks, I don't want to ruin the inside of the bag. But, all right, so you can see I do keep a laptop in there sometimes. Um, but they do have sections for pens here and here, and hopefully that pops up on camera for you. But if you have pen, even this one's pretty close. If you have pens that aren't, like, so you can see the Sharpie here, how the clip comes all the way up to the top. Uh, if you don't have a pen like that, which is pretty rare that that's a pen, most styles are similar to this. You have something protruding above the top of the clip. Uh, what that does in this instance is because that zipper is so close, you can see it here too, right? So like the pen's sticking out. And if you put them over here, good luck closing your bag. Um, that's why I've kind of moved it over here. Um, so when you go to zip your bag, it, it, it just gets in the way. Um, so two ways to do that, recess the pockets a little bit more, just a tad, even if it's just these two sections and not the, the actual iPad pocket, or relocate those to somewhere else. I wouldn't mind them just being a little more recessed because then I can throw all my pens back here. I don't care if they're in the front or not because I can keep one or two loose like you see I have already. But again, just another one of those little tidbit things. And the only reason these nitpicks are so small is because the rest of the bag is so well thought out that I had to like really spend a lot of time with it to figure out any shortcomings. So overall, like I said, this bag is freaking amazing, but it's just little things that sometimes, it's just because everything else works so well. Um, but da -da 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 -da. This isn't a big deal. It's just something I was thinking of and mentioned. So they have uh, the two side pockets on the side here and here. Uh, it would be cool if one of these was zippered or both of them and that's not a big deal uh, because I, I like that they're pretty easily accessible but it'd be cool if that was a, a great spot to like and this is already solved by the leash but if you could throw your keys in there and zip it up or something but you didn't want to like attach it to the leash uh, again just a little feedback I like being able to know something's secure instead of like tossing it in there or your phone it's a great spot for your phone but again I don't want my phone to like fall out or anything and I don't think it will that's just again me nitpicking um, doo -doo 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 -doo. And the last thing I have kind of as a negative is the side strap rivets don't rotate a full 360 degrees and sometimes this hinders movement, uh, especially when traveling or trying to like store the bag flat. So you can see here like the, the strap and it moves pretty freely, right? When you're, especially when you're wearing the bag. Um, but it stops here and here. So it does, you know, a half half of a full circle, a 180 instead of a 360. And that's not a big deal when you're wearing it because obviously you're spending 95% or 100% of your time with it up here when you're wearing it. But when you go to like travel with it, it would be nice if it just kind of like went around so you could tuck the strap underneath instead of kind of having to, like when I'm on the bus and stuff, I have to kind of sit with it on my lap. Like this is such a small complaint. Uh, so just bear with me guys, sorry. Um, but you know, 
just tucking it like this instead of like being able to like throw the strap over it just doesn't doesn't work as well um, but that's pretty much it for the, the shortcomings this would probably be the biggest issue which I've solved but that would be my biggest complaint if they just put this buckle style on both sides problem solved strap is great it's super comfortable to wear my only other kind of negative thing is all the padding is over here the way that I have it adjusted which again your results may vary it just depends on how you wear your bag uh, I would love to see this be in a more functional place of where I actually wear the strap instead of tucked over here on the side and because I have to shorten it on this side and keep this guy top taut as well um, I miss the great feature of this. So one of the things I underestimated when I first got the bag is there's a little tiny strip of black rubber right around the edge here. Uh, so that that way, if you were wearing it, you know, if you had your strap like this and you wanted it to slide around, you can wear it on this side and it's slippery. But if you needed it to sit tight, you can flip it on your shoulder and have just this little bit of rubber on there. And it's actually surprising to me at least how well that rubber worked. Um, but again, it's covered up now because of the length that I like to wear the bag. So I wish that was still accessible even if you liked a short strap um, because that was super functional. Uh, and it did a really great, that little bit of rubber did such a great job of stopping uh, the strap from sliding around. It was insane. I did not expect it to work that well. Also, in case you haven't noticed, this video is going to be a little bit longer. So I uh, hope you enjoy that. Uh, now on to some of the positives, which there's even more than I've jotted down. This is just uh, brainstorming um, and wanted to try and get as much down as possible. And then, of course, if you guys have any questions or anything, leave them in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer them. But moving on. So the latch is better than I expected. So this is one of the things they touted in the Kickstarter. And, you know, it's you see it all the time. It's super unique. And it's just it's definitely eye catching as well. Right. So that's one of the first things everyone that sees this bag really wants to know how it opens and closes because you do this and they're like, wait, what? Because it's like nothing you've ever seen before. Um, you can see a little bit of the water there, which we'll get to that again in a second. Um, but it's so much better than than I anticipated. The videos, they make it look sexy. They make it look cool. Um, they make it look functional, all of these things. But, you know, you just don't know if it's going to be as secure or any of that kind of stuff like they say in the video. If, if that's kind of one of your deciding factors about this bag, don't don't worry about it. It's insane. They did such a great job. It's over-designed. It's in a good way. Like, it's very well thought out. It's very functional. It works amazing. So when your bag's full, you still have plenty of room. It's still a secure close. Like, I haven't had any problems. And like I said, I've been carrying this thing around for three to four months. And that's my second bag, not including my first bag. Um, and I've had zero issues. It's been amazing. Nothing's falling out of the sides. Nothing, it's kept everything closed. It's never caught on anything and opened by itself. It's very secure. So don't let that deter you if that is something that you're worried about. Uh, what else? It is an extremely handsome bag. Uh, that's pretty obvious, but I've gotten so many compliments on this uh, from people that don't even care about cameras. Uh, and again, walking around San Francisco and stuff, it's just really nice to know that you have something that you can kind of like take pride in and it's just a beautiful well-designed, well-thought-out piece of uh, an extension of you, really, right? Like, I, I carry this thing everywhere, so it's kind of my life in most instances because I have, you know, my work stuff, my personal stuff, and it's awesome. It's just nice to have something that is this handsome. Um, it's extremely comfortable. Like, like I said, I'm carrying it around so much. It's been great. It's never really gotten in the way. A lot of the time, it's, it's kind of... Uh, enabled me instead of disabled me, which is really, really great. Um, it's a pretty high compliment for a bag, something that you enjoy carrying because it's aesthetically pleasing, but it's also extremely highly functional. So great job again, Peak Design. Uh, and it's a great size and it travels well. A lot of people are either like, it's not big enough or it's too, it's not big enough or it's too big. I think it's just right for me. I, I keep uh, some camera gear in here, which I'll show you in a second. I'll go through a typical what I keep in my bag, which isn't much right now because I already took out some of the stuff. Um, but I have room for my camera and then I have room for my stuff for the day. So if I want a water bottle or I'll throw my jacket in there if it gets too warm in the city. Um, sometimes I'll put like lunch stuff in here, like little snack things. And it just, it does a great job. And again, it's expandable and collapsible. And like that is a huge selling point for them for good reason. It's extremely, it's awesome. It, it, it really does do a great job of keeping the bag small when you need it, but then allowing it to open up if you have some extra stuff in there. Um, let's see. Oh, another thing that kind of caught me off guard was the top zippers. Seemed like a cool idea, 
but the amount that I use these and the amount of time that they save me is insane. Um, I love it for grabbing out my laptop or grabbing out like a notebook, but still having this be a separate compartment is genius. I really love that. And when you do have your laptop in here, it adds a little more rigidity to the back of the bag, which is cool. Um, and then for the front, like not being able to open or not having to open your latch to get into your stuff is insane. It's so cool to be able to grab a camera out of here and go. Um, or if you have your water bottle in there and you're walking around or on your on a hike or on a photo shoot or, you know, like a walkabout photo shoot or something around the city, you just want to grab your water bottle out. You don't want to like have the vulnerability of opening up your whole bag or the, you know, the cumbersome, like if there's a space issue, like uh, we have BART in the Bay Area, which is like our subway. Uh, and you don't want to like swing this open and whack like 10 people because you're crammed in there like sardines. You can just unzip your bag, grab whatever you need and go. The only thing I guess that is back to kind of like a negative is it's a little bit more difficult to get in this front pocket from the zippered pocket. It's a, it's definitely possible. Like it's not impossible by any means. You could see there, like you could see it get right down into it. Uh, it's just one of those things that's a little bit more difficult. And that's again, is a, a me use, use case scenario. It may not be a you use case scenario, just because I keep my wallet and keys and stuff in here only to like get them out of the way. Um, but that's not a big deal. That's just me. Um, what else? Da, 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 da. Oh yeah. So the key camera leash capture integration thing. So we got, I love the idea that they have uh, these straps on here so you could put the capture and just freaking like, <laughs> let's see if I could do this all with, like basically throw your camera on there and go, right? Like I think that's genius, and especially if you're out shooting or you're a street photographer or you're just like on vacation, you're walking around or whatever and you wanna throw your camera on your bag and have some lenses and extra stuff in here, but like your camera external. Uh, that's so well thought out, I freaking love it. And then, also, and it's smart for them, right? Because it's a way to like upsell you on other products. Um, but it's it just plays such a great functional purpose that I have no problem. <laughs> I have no problem upselling me on that. And then also, so normally I would just use my, I would take the my strap off. But since I have one on here, I'll just throw that. This is another great thing. Like if the side leash that is st like stitched into the bag, if you're around shooting and stuff, you can keep your camera on here. Da, da, da. And hopefully you can cut all this kind of translates onto the video. Um, but then when you're shooting, boom, 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 you can do your thing. And then if if you drop it, so there's that safety or if someone comes by and you're afraid they're gonna try and like snatch your camera out of your hands, the fact that it has another attach point to your bag is genius. Um, and it's just long enough that it's still kind of functional to get up to your eye and go. I love that. I think that's that's just, it goes to show you the attention to detail and the care that they put into designing the bag and you know, the redundancy. So you got the safety of the actual capture itself and then you got the safety of the leash like attachment thing just in case you dropped your camera, you get bumped or like I said, someone runs by and tries to steal the camera out of your hands. There's another deterrent there. Um, and normally I wouldn't have that attached to the capture. I would have it attached to the my strap because um, I wouldn't be using a strap. And you have the added benefit, like I was mentioning earlier about having a zipper to keep your keys in one of these pockets. You could just throw one of your attachment points on your keys and snap your keys in here and throw it in here. So that way when you get home, you can pull this out, unlock your door, put it back in your bag, and you never have to worry about like losing your keys or getting them, like dropping them somewhere or them falling out, anything like that. Uh, so it's another really great use for that. Um, so I think that just the inclusion of that is just so, uh, beneficial and has been helpful. I've used it. So I've used that actually probably more than I've used my capture, which doesn't come with the bag. I just want to point that out. Uh, you have to buy that separately, but I bought it cause it's awesome. Um, uh, versatile dividers. I won't go too much into detail with that, but you know, the dividers that come in the bag, I'm only using two right now and I could probably get away with just using one and tucking this over, but I don't, I like the little bit of extra cushion here. Um, but just the functionality and the, the Velcro is so amazing. It's very, very sticky, but it's not, um, it's high quality Velcro uh, on the inside of your bag. So it's not gonna scratch your stuff up. It's not gonna mess anything up. Um, but when you put the tabs in there, it just like grabs really well. And then, you know, you can fold them every which way. You can make so many different combinations and stuff. And there's a lot of videos out there, even by Peak Design that show you uh, the different uses for those. So I won't go into detail there, but great job guys the best dividers I've ever seen. You look at camera bags now and they're just so cumbersome and gross because they have like the blocks of styrofoam. It's just disgusting, especially compared to something like this. 
All right, and we're back. So my camera died, so this is the second time I'm doing the ending, and hopefully I don't forget anything that I talked about the first time. So we left off with talking about the dividers and how awesome they are, and I don't think that was... I don't think there's anything left in that. Freak. Oh, waist straps. Yep. Uh, basically, water repelling and waist straps. So uh, another good thing is on the sides here, uh, there are two pockets, one on each side, that has waist straps. That's just another anchor point um, for the bag to attach around your waist. But I really like that they included... I like that they included those straps, but I like even more the fact that they included the ability to remove those straps, which I've done with mine, and that gives me just a little more room on the inside. So I like that I can take those out, but if I need the extra security, pop them right back on, good to go. Um, so I appreciate the thoughtfulness there and giving you a little more volume in the bag. Um, and then the water repellent. So you can see uh, the bag uh, is definitely a couple of different shades of brown, especially right here, you can see a little bit, and then compared to here to here, you can see a little bit. It's definitely raining outside. I wouldn't say it's pouring, but I walked quite a quite a good ways, and you can already see it starting to dry. That's crazy. Um, walked quite a, quite a few, probably a couple miles, I guess, total, um, to the bus and then from the bus, uh, and that's all... That's all it got. It didn't really bleed through too much. Nothing on the inside of the bag got wet. My laptop and everything back here didn't get wet. And I was wearing this on my back with no umbrella. Uh, so everything was shearing off the back of the bag. So for it to hold up that well, that's pretty awesome. I wouldn't stand under a waterfall or dunk it in a pool or anything like that. It is not waterproof. Um, but I think for everyday use and for stuff, you know, normally you would have an umbrella or you'd be getting into a vehicle or building to building, to building. you wouldn't be like standing out in the rain for a long extended period of time like I was. I think you'd be fine. Uh, and again, it wasn't pouring outside, but it was definitely raining. It was, uh, I got wet and you know, my jacket's soaked and all that, but the bag held up really well. Um, so that's a testament to uh, their engineering there. And then I guess the last thing to do is just to give you a quick look at, I guess what I would normally carry on a typical day. Uh, you already saw I took out my laptop. I uh, got a couple of pens on the back here, nothing really else. Uh, and I don't keep a tablet in here. I actually keep a, planner. It's the Hobonichi planner, which uh, this is the 2016 English version. If you guys are curious about that, leave a comment. Uh, I'd be happy to make a video on it. I freaking love it. Uh, that is my second one that I had because my first one got stolen with my first bag, which was a bummer. Um, and then on the inside, so just a typical setup. Uh, I like to shoot film a ton. I do have a digital camera, obviously, but uh, this is a relatively new addition to the family. It's the Olympus Stylus Epic. Freaking love it. It's so, it's so small. Uh, if you want, I can do a video on this eventually. Just let me know. Uh, I usually keep a roll of film extra in case I blow through. And then I have my F3, which I love as well. Previously, I had a Nikon uh, FE, but that got nabbed with the first bag and you know, when something like that happens, why not upgrade? Which is ironic because the FEs now are almost as much as I got the F3 for, and the F3 is, you know, one of Nikon's professional body cameras, so. And I've, I've loved shooting with this so far. The only thing is I wish I got the HP viewfinder, which, you know, always something to seize over, so maybe a, an eventual upgrade. And then on the front pockets here, nothing too crazy. I usually keep like five, 10 bucks cash just for the bus fare stuff. Um, this is the rubber band that comes so you can keep your tripod locked in. I usually keep a couple pens. This notebook usually stays in here. I have my wallet and then uh, just a couple extra pens. So nothing too crazy. I'm not like, you know, going out on a shoot. I'll usually have like maybe a USB uh, cable in here or something like that for charging or, you know, like one of those little extra battery packs or something. Uh, if I need to, I'll throw in my big DSLR in here and take out one of the film cameras. But you know, pretty simple setup. Uh, this is just my to and from work typical day. It is, you know, it's a Thursday after work, so this is just what I would normally have, except maybe some lunch stuff in here. Um, but yeah, overall, you know, uh, it's just it's such a such a great bag. And if you guys were thinking about picking one up, it can be a little expensive, especially you know at first glance. But uh, if you're using it like I am, I use it every day as like a normal bag plus a camera bag. It's phenomenal. It's traveled really well. It's held up really well in the time that I've used it. And I don't baby the stuff. I tend to kind of beat it up a little bit and it still looks brand new. Um, it's, it's extremely well thought out. It's really, really great. And like I said a little bit earlier, Peak Design, guys, if you're watching and you are designing a backpack and you'd like a little feedback, let me know. I'd be happy to help you out. Um, 
and give you any feedback that I may have. But yeah, I appreciate all of you swinging by. I would really appreciate it if you liked, subscribed, and shared the videos with your fellow enthusiasts so that we could grow this channel together. And uh, yeah, keep being awesome. I'll try to live up to those standards as well. Um, but shoot me any questions, comments, anything below. I'll be happy to answer them and get back to you as quickly as I can. But thanks again for watching. Take it easy.